What's cracking, everyone? My name is Ryan, and today I want to talk to you guys about the Sennheiser HD 560S. Now, this is a headphone that was first released back in September of 2020, so I get it. I'm a little late to the game on this one. However, there have been a couple of different, I guess, variations of this one. This is the latest model that you would get. It retails in for $199. You can typically find this for $149. And if you don't buy it for that, I would wait because I guarantee you'll be able to get it for that price. Now with the HD 560S, it looks like the cable is attached to the headphone on the left ear cup. However, I will tell you this is a detachable cable. It's a simple twist pull mechanism that will be a two and a half mil connection to the ear cup and it terminates on the other side to a three and a half mil connection and includes a 6.3 adapter inside of the box that I have this already attached on the cable. Now the build of the headphone is actually entirely plastic. However, I do think this is a very nice plastic material so it doesn't feel cheap or anything like that. It's definitely not something I'd be tossing around the house or doing something like that with it because it's may not be sturdy enough to hold up for that kind of a beating. The pads on here are a velour soft pad material. The headband up here is like a foam type material, at least on this version of the 560S that I have. The cable of course goes into the left ear cup. And then comfort wise, I mean, these are, these are pretty comfortable on my head. I did have to extend them out quite a bit. I, I've got a bigger head, so these are gonna be probably made out of the box more for smaller head shapes. So you will extend them out, but they extend just fine. I didn't have any issues there. And I can see this being possibly a little bit clampy for some, it's fine for me, but it does angle in at the very bottom when I wear them so that, you know, like I said, doesn't bother me, but it could bother some on that clamp. And that is done so, so that the way the sound shoots into your ear is at more of an angle for these type of headphones. And I would be careful about the seal too, because if it doesn't angle in enough, you won't get that proper seal. And that definitely can change the sound. So something that I would take of note there. These are 120 ohms and they have an SPL of 110 dB per milliwatt. So these will be easy to power off of things like a phone, laptop, and that sort of uh, device and gear. However, when you can scale these up with different amps, that's where they kind of open up a little bit more. And I'll get further into that as I do discuss the sound of this. Well, and before I fail to mention this, these are a frequency response of six up to 38 kilohertz for those that care about that. And so my quick way of speaking about the sound of this headphone would be to say reference. And I can definitely understand why this has kind of been a standard that others will put up against a headphone under $200. Well, how does it sound compared to a 560S? I get that now because this is kind of a reference tuning not completely, and I'll get into that here in a minute. I'm gonna go a little bit all over the place here and just kind of start with soundstage first because I think the soundstage on the 560S is very natural. It's not anything overly wide, not like the, uh, you know, the 800S is, and it's definitely not claustrophobic like something like a Focal can be, like a clear MG or something like that. It's just natural, again. And I think that naturalness lends into the fact that this has good mid-range. And the mid-range presence on this is just a very solid across the board until you get into that upper mid-range. And that's where I think this deviates a bit because this is definitely to me a mid-forward type scenario where vocalists are very brought forward towards you. And it can tend to be shouty at times, depending on the vocalist. I always think of, you know, immediately when I think of mid-forward, I sample a track from Nora Jones, don't know why. And you know, the first words of those verses, if it's mid forward and it's shouty, it can definitely be present there. And it was on that track, especially when you give it some volume, but it wasn't terrible. It wasn't harsh, but I think, you know, depending on the genre of music that you like, it could be in some cases. And that's where I think that deviates a little bit in that mid range. The base of this is a, it extends pretty well, but it's not overly meaty and overly just girthy and present and just, uh, you know, 
I guess doesn't have a lot of fullness all the time to the base, but you definitely get a good sense. And I would not consider this anemic because if it was, honestly, I wouldn't like it. I like some base to my presentation and it had just enough for me to enjoy that. And so then I would say into the upper, you know, into the treble region, it's kind of the same scenario as the mid-range. It's got a good sense of treble. And when you have singers or vocalists or things that are a little sibly, that is, by the way, my new term for a sibilant singer, sibly. Uh, when you have somebody that has that, you know, sibilance to their voice, it's going to pronounce it and it's going to show it up in the uh, presentation of this headphone, but it's not a sibilant headphone by any means. It's just not a darker tuned or warmer tuned enough to tame that in that region. So that's kind of where I go back to that reference and mix master type because it's going to show you those aspects of the sound, which I think is great for me, may not be for others. So then overall, and then I guess up into the airiness region of the treble, I think it's got that. It's got some sparkle there when it needs it. And it does lend to some pretty good details for this price range of a headphone as well. So I think if you're looking for something that's detailed and a little more technical, you're going to like that there. So as far as some dislikes I have, actually, before I talk about the sound, one dislike I do have is on the cable. Now I get it. It's detachable, which is great. And it's that two and a half mil. I just wish, you know, I prefer my headphones to have that dual detachable cables so that I can go ahead and you know, more universal plugging them in and out with balanced cables and things like that. And I know there's modifications and things and other cables you can get with this still. It's not my favorite thing, but that is probably one negative I would say for me. And then the other one's going to be the imaging. So when I first listened to this, I was like, wow, this is great imaging because I was listening to some, to some tracks and just listening to the vocalist and being, you know, just kind of swallowed up by that sound and I was hearing crispiness of you know whether it was guitars and things coming from the left and right and just bouncing back and forth and it was a great sound to me and just made me think that this had such a good imaging until I really started listening to things that had kind of a forward imaging or a center imaging and it's a little bit lost there I would say and almost a little too lost at times to where you know is this a game changer for gaming no. And I'll talk about that in the future, but that is kind of some of the downsides I would say. So if you're looking for details and imaging and things, it's going to fail a little bit, I think, when it comes to that center part of the uh, image of this headphone. Now, furthermore, as far as sources go, this is 120 ohms. So as I said, you can power it on a phone or a laptop and you're going to get sound out of it, right? You're going to get enough sound. You're going to get enough volume, I would say. But when you can get this on some amps with some power, it's going to scale a little bit and it's going to shine through a little bit. And one thing I really enjoyed with this headphone was this little guy, the IFI Go Bar. Now, when I use this with this headphone, in fact, I was just doing this some more today, uh, the Go Bar has that X Bass, X Space feature. And when I use the X Bass on this, I got that meatiness out of the bass I was missing. It was just enough that I was like, damn, this sounds nice. And then I actually used the X bass thinking that may be a bit much, but in some tracks, it just expanded it a little bit further and gave that meatiness to it where it was just a well-rounded sound. And I really enjoyed that sound. Uh, and then, you know, pairing this up with my ADI 2 deck, it's definitely more transparent and everything sounds a little bit probably thinner albeit good, just a little bit thinner, I would say. So that kind of, I guess, shines through the transparency of the two deck. I plug this into my liquid platinum, thinking I might get some of that hybrid tube sound, and it wasn't as much as I wanted, only because I think the single ended is just not where it's at with the liquid platinum. But I can't wait to try this on tubes, because I could definitely see how this would sound probably pretty good on some tube amps to give you some of that, you know, relaxed sound that you can get out of a tube and kind of put some bendiness to the waves and the sound waves coming out of it to just, you know, give it that kind of a feeling of sitting back and sipping some whiskey and enjoying this headphone. So, you know, that's kind of where I put this with the source quality out of it and how it can definitely scale and it can have some variations, which is why I really think this is a great option at the price that it comes in. All right, so to wrap this all up, I'm not going to really talk about comparisons as of yet, and I'm definitely going to do that because 
that's what this one's all about for me is being able to compare it. This stays in my collection because it has enough of a variation between my Harmonic Dyn Athena that's sitting behind me there, my Tiger 300R. I think it's definitely gonna have some variations there as well. And then even the PC38X that I've got sitting right here, which is a gaming headphone from Sennheiser. Uh, and thank you to the friend that loaned this to me to be able to listen to it. But there's even enough variations from that that there's definitely you know, an opportunity there to do a video and talk about some of the comparisons there, which I will do. And definitely gonna talk about gaming as well, just not quite yet. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please smash that like button. Please also subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already, because as I said, I've got more videos and things that I have coming out to you very soon. In the meantime, I'm going to let you guys get back to doing whatever it is that you do. And I am going to start working on, as I said, a comparison video. If I haven't said that already, I repeat myself sometimes. Sorry about that. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.